Olga Kozulina is busy campaigning in a suburb of Minsk. The opposition Social Democratic Party has nominated the 28-year-old lawyer as its candidate for the parliamentary election in late September. Although even the fact that she's allowed to campaign openly is progress of sorts, Kozulina insists that the Lukashenko regime is still repressive. He just wants to pull the wool over their eyes in Europe and the US. He wants to make out that Belarus is on the way to democracy and that the elections are open and fair. But that's simply not true. Kozulina and her campaign team are under a lot of pressure. They're determined to put up a fight. They don't want Lukashenko's allies to waltz into parliament unimpeded. At least Olga Kozulina can count on support from her father, opposition leader Alexander Kozulin. As a former political prisoner, he's barred from running for election himself, even though he was pardoned. Olga and her team are working on campaign slogans. They want to stress that she represents a new beginning, appealing to voters' doubts about President Lukashenko's promises that change is on its way. Alexander Kozulin sees his early release as a gesture designed to placate the West rather than evidence of real reform. Lukashenko is basically obliged to seek dialogue with Western Europe and the U.S. He needs to attract foreign investors. He needs to boost the economy, because right now there are serious signs that the country is facing a serious crisis. These young people are preparing for a demonstration, writing boycott on this banner. The Belarus Young Front activists see the parliamentary elections as a farce. The security forces regularly clamp down on critics of the regime, not least because of demonstrations like this one. Last week, the police and the secret police raided our garage, where we always planned demonstrations. They confiscated everything. Paint, stickers, banners. That's why we're having to work outside now. At home, 24-year-old Denis Kornev arranges to meet his fellow activists on the Internet. They also discuss where they'll be painting on their banners. He'd like to study law, but he's already been rejected by all the universities he's applied to. He's convinced that free thinkers like him have no future in Belarus. When Lukashenko objects to Russian policy, he simply announces that he has decided to look westwards to the civilized world. Then, when he upsets the West, or the West upsets him, he immediately allies himself with the mother country, Russia. It's all just a question of political expediency. Most Belarusians will never even hear about the Young Front protest. The police will remove their banners as soon as they've gone up. Few will ever get wind of their campaign either. Olga Kozulina and her father watch the election broadcasts on state television. Most of them air in the early evening, when people are still on their way home from work. The Kozulin family believe the government will do its best to steer the parliamentary elections in favor of Lukashenko. Campaigning will last for one month, and throughout that month, we have the right to campaign as much as we like without any restrictions, officially. But in reality, the authorities want us to register every single election rally and apply for permission for each one. Despite all the obstacles, Olga Kozulina is determined to fight for change in Belarus. Her father's release is all the proof she needs that even Alexander Lukashenko can be forced to cave in, if the pressure's great enough.